this lesson we'll talk very quickly about the basics of a class so I'm just gonna make a multi-line comment just to talk to use to talk about what a class is right so we're gonna say that a class is a blueprint of an object in or outside of the real world this could be for example a dog a house or perhaps something more abstract like philosophy okay so whilst the idea of philosophy exists in the real world it's not it's not a material object it's like a, an abstract object right so objects can be of you know, it can be real or they can be abstract, you know, just in the mind, just ideological, right? Or it could even be a file, for example, right? These classes can define attributes and functions that apply to these objects, okay? Classes are blueprints. I know I've said that already, but just just think it's helpful to remind you again that a class is a blueprint. So I'll get rid of this multi-line comment. I'll seal it off there. So what do I mean? A class is a blueprint of an object in or outside of the world. Well, when I make a variable, let's say variable A is equal to YOLO, for example. This variable here actually it doesn't just store a value it actually stores an object okay it's a data type object of type string right this data type is a string right and so it's it, it holds an object with four characters sorry five characters y o l o an exclamation mark right so these individual characters are actually the attributes of this string okay and these attributes of this object are all stored within this object and this object is actually stored in the variable okay now let's say i wanted to make an object with you know customized uh, attributes customized its own functions that can be applied to it stuff like that well we can make that here so we make we use the keyword class first of all to indicate that we want to make a class and then we use a class name i'm going to call this one example right then we've got the curly bracket squealy bracket i don't know whatever you want to call these brackets right inside of here we actually define some variables right and these variables are the attributes so we'll say attribute one is equal to and we'll just leave them empty for now so it's an empty string we'll say attribute two is equal to zero we'll say a variable attribute three is equal to true Okay, so here we've stored a string as one attribute, a value as in an integer value as another attribute, and a boolean, a bool as an attribute, right? So this this class, this blueprint, um, can be used to make an object that has these attributes, right? So let's let's make an object with these attributes. So we'll call it variable x1, meaning example one. Okay, we'll say that it's equal to example. And then we use this. So what this is, this is not a function, okay? This is something that, depending on the language, is either called an initializer or it's called a constructor. And what it does is you use a class name and then parentheses, sometimes arguments, but we'll get into that later, and you can make an object of a class. So in this case, our class is an example. So we can make an object that will have all these attributes and they'll all be stored here inside of this variable. This object will be stored here. Instead of us having to have three variables of different kinds and try and remember that they're all related to each other, we can store all these attributes in one variable, in one object in the variable, right? Now, I'm going to just make a print statement now. Let's, let's actually see what it prints out. Now, some of you, you know, might guess that it'll print out all three of these. Some of you might think that it won't. 
let's see what happens okay so thankfully the code has worked so i'm not as bad as i sometimes think i am but more importantly this here that's been printed out isn't these free attributes what's actually happened is it's printed out that in swift playground there exists an object called example and this thing we've printed out is an object called example inside the swift playground so if you're running swift a different way it won't be swift playground it'll be something else but it'll be dot example right and basically what this is saying is this object this 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 is an object of the example class this thing that we've printed that you want to print out and that's the description given back okay so you might be thinking what about these attributes then how can we uh how can we print these attributes out how can we do something with them all right i'll show you so we'll say that ex1 and now we use a dot this is called dot notation and this access is something within the class it could be a function or it could be an attribute okay for now we're using the dot to access an attribute within the class why is that because ex1 is an object of type example so ex1 dot says that we go into this object and it's because it's of type example the dot notation refers to all the stuff in the class example okay so we'll say ex1 dot attribute 1 is equal to hello right and now we can print ex1 dot attribute 1 right so here we've reassigned the value uh, which was you know just a string with no value to be hello and now we're going to print it out you can see that's worked you can see i can actually print that out and that's fine but you might be thinking well i'm not so sure if it was by default this value okay 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 i'll i'll prove that you know these default values are what i've said they are i'll be i'll do that by printing out i'll print out a couple of things actually i'll print out oops so i've got my print statements ready there i'll print out ex1 dot attribute two and ex1 dot attribute three okay print these out and you see we've got zero and true so this isn't the default but that's only because we changed it here and these two are the default because we haven't changed it now if we hadn't have changed it this would just be we wouldn't actually get a printout we get nothing printed out in fact so you believe me i'll show you okay so i'll make variable ex2 and again we've got to make it equal to example we've got to make it equal to an initializer and we'll print out ex2 dot attribute one and then we'll print out ex2 dot attribute two look nothing there so we've got absolutely nothing, which is a blank string. And then we've got the value zero. Now this is a blank string. So it shows that our initializer has worked, that we, when we first initialize an object, it starts with these default values that we're given, right? Simple enough. So you can see here, you know, you can manipulate uh, individual attributes here and assign them new values like this. You can print them out here. And that you can make objects of a uh, class type and assign them to a variable via this methodology right now then that's all well and good but you may be thinking well what's the point having just these values i want to do something with these values you know i want to oh, i want to do something cool my my class for example is a dog right my class is a dog and it's got a variable called legs and that's equal to four and then it's got a variable called fur and that's equal to true right but i want i want you know i want it to be able to bark so we say function bark i'll we'll say that we print out woof woof right now i've got a question can a dog fly 
really generally dogs can't fly so we'll say that we'll make a function called can fly right and it's like a question that we ask and we're going to actually return a boolean here right i'm going to return a bool i think it's like that is it i don't know that might be, come up with an error because i'm not so used to making that and we're going to return false okay i'll just run that see if it is right right that has to be a capital there we go now it should work there we are sorry about that now then i can make a dog for example so i'll make variable dog one is equal to dog and then we'll say dog one dot bark okay dot bark and you should see down here that it says woof woof so it can bark now now this class actually has a function inside of it that allows our dog objects to do something okay something that other objects can't do so what do I mean other objects can't do it well let's look at x1 shall we what happens if we say x1 back we get an error because the example has no member called bark so what that means is this bark uh, function isn't a member of the example class i.e this bark function doesn't exist inside of this class so the object of type example cannot use it okay so i'm just going to comment that out because obviously an example can't bark only a dog or a person imitating a dog can bark silly me now why don't we print out dog one dot can fly okay now obviously a dog can't fly so this comes out as false and we actually get a printout of false we'll keep going down here we got printout of false there because obviously a dog can't fly yeah and once again you know we can use dog one dot legs we can print that out for example and see what its value is and we can print out you know dog one dot fur for example and we should after this false value get a four and a true value right yeah because it's got four legs and it's also true that it has fur right so there you are that's a more useful kind of class because this has its own functions its own things it can do and instead of having to make lots of functions and lots of variables to represent a dog and remember them all you can just make objects of dog type and now you've got these dogs forever and you can make them bark and you can ask if they can fly it's very useful stuff okay very useful stuff now let's say we want to make a new dog right and we're going to call it class uh, space dog okay Ooh. <laughs> sorry sorry i shouldn't have done that that was uh corny okay well we want it to be exactly the same as dog the only difference we want is when we say can fly we'll say true because this is a space dog you know they've got space wings or space levitation or something like that and they can fly right so we're going to do something that's called inheritance right what we do is after the word space dog we put a colon and we put the word dog right and what this says is we say we want this class called space dog to have everything to get everything that dog has and put it inside of itself okay so now we've got the function bark the function can fly the variable fur equals true variable legs we've got all of that stuff and it's all preset to the way that we put it here okay so when i make a object of this it'll be able to do all of this right but here's a problem this function can fly i mean it returns a boolean and all blah 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 but it's actually going to be returned as true because this is a space dog so we need to change that so we can do what's called an override right and what this does is it overrides the previous function and rewrites it in this class. So what will happen is we can change this function that we inherited from dog 
but all of the rest of this will stay the same unless we override it all but I'll only override can fly so we use the keyword override in order to do this and then we use the keyword func so we're overriding a function not a variable here and then we put the variable name and we're going to put to bool once again because we don't want to override the data type and we're going to return true this time uh, because a space dog can fly okay i'm also going to write another function and we're going to say we'll call it fly right and we'll say we'll just print something out actually you know print out the space dog flies high yeah let's run that make sure i haven't got four million errors and i don't it's run perfectly so why don't we make an object of class dog and an object of class space dog so we'll say variable doggy equals dog because we'll just make a dog for now and we're going to say variable sp doggy equals space dog right just check that make sure that works out great nothing's gone wrong so let's try to use the new function on the space dog so we'll say sp doggy dot fly right that's the new function okay and we get a printout that says the space dog flies high okay now let's use this on doggy so let's see what happens when we use this on doggy so doggy dot fly there's an error value of type dog has no member fly what oh yeah there is no fly function in there so space dog has inherited everything from inside the class dog but the class dog doesn't get anything from space dog and because this function fly was made in space dog but not in dog dogs can't use it because dogs can't fly right just something to remember you know that's a bit more advanced but just something to remember right so i'll just comment that out now let's print out sp doggy dot can fly okay because last time when we tried the dot fly we actually and we printed it out we actually got a false reading so we want to make sure that in this new uh, overridden function that it returns true and not false okay and if we go down to the very last very last uh, printout you can see that it's actually true that this space dog can indeed fly okay so let's go over everything right let's go over it all so here we've just made a variable and you can see that this is actually an object a string object and it contains four five attributes you know y o l o and exclamation mark are characters and this object contains five characters okay here is a class this is how we make a class and it's called example it's got three attributes and you can see that the attributes don't all have to be the same type okay but if they are a chosen type you cannot make them another type when you make uh, when you reassign okay here we've reassigned value to attribute one of an example object and we've printed out the attributes as well just to show that you can access them here we've made a class of dog right and we can make objects of type dog with from this blueprint of the class we've given it a couple of variables as per before but we've also added two functions one that prints out woof woof and one that prints out that gives returns the uh, boolean value or bool value of false okay now if we try to make uh, well if we use the bark method it'll print out woof woof to the screen so that's worked great if we try and do it on the x1 uh, object uh, variable sorry if we try and use the bark function on it it won't work because the class example um doesn't contain that method doesn't contain that function right so example objects such as ex1 cannot bark okay 
dog one cannot fly, so this will print out false. Um, dog one legs should be four, and that should be true. Here we go, false, four, true, right? Now, here I've made a new class called space dog, right? And by putting this colon after the space after the space dog declaration of the name and putting dog after this colon, I've said that I want this new class to inherit or to get copy and paste all of the code inside of here and basically put it inside of here without me having to copy and paste it, right? However, the can fly function, you can see here returns true and there returns false, right? And in order for us to make it return true, we had to override the original function with the override keyword before the function declaration. And we have to rewrite this whole function. We also added a new function, which was fly, that prints out the space dog flies, okay? And you see in testing that that information is all correct and it's all worked as intended. I hope this was educational. Thank you for watching. See you next time.